presentation. Thank you to all of you for coming tonight. Mr. Lilly, the roll call. Mr. Arndt. Present. Ms. Fisher. Here. Mrs. Metzler. Here. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon. Here. And Mrs. Ortiz. Present. Uh, we need a motion this evening to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion on that? And roll call, please. Mr. Arndt. Yes. Ms. Fisher. Yes. Mrs. Metzler. Yes. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon. Yes. And Mrs. Ortiz. Yes. And are we in compliance this evening? Yes, we are. And please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there any correspondence tonight? Uh, yes, I received communications regarding either student bus or building issues um, that were all either addressed or directed to the appropriate personnel to address. Thank you. And I, I want okay. to uh, let the board know, I, I distributed a copy of this, but we received correspondence from Harpersfield Township at the beginning of December. This was for a second TIF, tax increment financing proceedings. Um, just notification to let us know there's really no what they're doing now because of a change in the law that allows them to ask for up to 75% without board approval. Um, that's what they're doing. They had a meeting Monday and I believe that TIF resolution was adopted at that meeting. It, in the packet that I distributed, there are uh, a list of parcels and there's pictures of those parcels. Um, these are, for the most part, different parcels from what their TIF 1 was, so this would be TIF 2. Um, there was, I pointed out to them that there was one parcel, the Fraternal Order of Eagles picnic grounds, that was on both, and so they would be removing it from TIF 2. That is uh, parcel... Parcel, um, I believe, 2003000400, Fraternal Order of Eagles. So this entire packet that you gave us um, from Harpersfield Township is TIF 2? This is this. TIF 2. Okay. All right. right. When does it take effect? Uh, immediate, it said uh, it was contemplated that the TIF resolution will be effective immediately upon such adoption. And is it, it is adopted? I'm sorry? It is adopted? I, I believe they, I, I didn't hear anything from the township. I did not attend the meeting, but I believe that it was adopted. Okay, thank you. Are there any agenda modifications? Uh, yes, I would like to amend R to add an additional reason um, to enter into executive session, which is matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. I have one as well, Mrs. Metzler. Um, I'd like to vote on substitute teacher Philip M. Schmidt as a separate item, please. Okay. We will adjust that as item 5A when we take our votes. Thank you. Okay, we are now moving to the hearing of the public. I want to state that statements made during the hearing of the public may not reflect the opinion of the board and are strictly the opinions of the speakers. Each person uh, wanting to address the board can step forward to the microphone. They'll have five minutes to speak. They'll be alerted when there's 30 seconds remaining, and this um, time frame for the meeting will be a total of 30 minutes. We'd ask that you state your name and address for the record. Okay, with no speakers at the mic, we will move on. We need a motion to approve the minutes. Move. Second. Is there any discussion? And roll call, please. 
Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. And Mrs. Ortiz? Abstain. We need a motion for the treasurer's financial report. Moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. And Mr. Arndt? Yes. And a motion to approve the invoices? So moved. Second. Any discussion? And roll call. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. And Ms. Fisher? Yes. And our informational items tonight, Mr. Lilly? You see a couple donations uh, from the Geneva Letterman Club and Denise and Robert Brace to the Mark Brace Sports Pay to Participate Fund. Also an anonymous donation to assist with the cafeteria Christmas bike giveaway, which I believe we have Mrs. Santa Claus sitting with us. Uh, I know him. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, another donation from Nancy Schwegler to assist students with negative balances at Geneva Middle School. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Madam yeah. President? Yes. Uh, Kevin, uh, out of the, the uh, play to pay or the, the school to help with lunches, which is most helpful when people give to? I mean, do we, do we affect more students on, on donations to the pay to play or do we affect higher numbers with donations for, to help with the cafeteria? Well, right, right now, I would say the cafeteria. I mean, there are a lot of people with negative balances. Part of the problem is they came off of two years of being free. I just had a conversation with uh, our food service director, Laura Jones, uh, earlier this week. People coming <clears throat> off not having to pay for two years, and they're sending their kids to school, and, and we're feeding them. There's no more, no longer any alternative lunch. Um, so they're fed, and they just run up negative balances. So the donations to help that affects more people because there are a lot more with negative balances than we have used so far to help with pay to participate fees in terms of numbers. And, and you're <coughs> indicating that we have higher numbers with a negative balance now oh, than yeah. we have in the past? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This year in particular. <coughs> Any other questions? I just want to express my thanks to our donors for helping out our students. Mrs. Dixon, the legislative report this evening. One moment. Okay, so Senate Bill 178, which seems to be the hottest button issue. That is the legislation that would reform the Ohio Department of Education it was amended into House Bill 151, which would revise the teacher residency program. The House failed to concur with the Senate amendments, meaning that all provisions included in both House Bill 151 and Senate Bill 178 did not pass. So they are, they are dead. Uh, OSBA does expect, however, that come January at the new session, of the General Assembly, someone it will be reintroduced. So we'll have a different number if you're keeping track of that, the way to follow it or whatever. So um, it'll be reintroduced and they'll have to start all over with the committee hearings and the testimonies and all of that like it's a brand new bill. So for now, it's uh, it did not pass. The Ohio House unanimously passed House Bill 403 this bill would require school district superintendents to file a report with the ODE regarding a teacher who retired under threat of disciplinary investigation. Dr. Treehorn, is this ringing a bell? Yeah. Um, in addition to those who resigned under threat of disciplinary action. In other words, um, superintendents will have to report if there was a disciplinary investigation that led to a person's either termination or res resignation. Uh, as part of their personnel file. House and Primary Secondary Education Committee held sponsor testimony on HB 643. This would require school districts to grant excused absences to students for 4-H programs when they miss 
uh, day of academic schooling in favor of a 4-H event, then that would be an excused absence. The committee also held sponsor testimony on HB 565. This would add five students to the non-voting members, excuse me, five students as non-voting members to the state BOE. Now this was in flux because of the possible restructuring bill. They sort of went hand in hand for a minute. And so now that the restructuring bill has failed, um, they're now going forward with this bill that would allow some students to um, serve on the State Board of Education. We heard, they, excuse me, they heard sponsor testimony on HB 619. This will allow school districts to permit K through 12 students to take up to three mental health days per school year as an excused absence. So um, instead of, you know, instead of my child was sick, you can just say my child needed a mental health day, so that's up for vote next, next term. Uh, the committee also held sponsor testimony on HB 748. Um, this would require school districts, community schools, and STEM schools to adopt a policy regarding professional coworker relationships and the performance of staff member duties. The policy would prohibit each professional staff member from engaging in political, partisan, ideological, or religious activity by compelling a student to adopt, affirm, or adhere to a specific belief. They, uh, it sounds to me like they are, it's an attempt to make curriculum factual and not, not in any way biased or opinionated. Um, and it also includes, um, sorry, one moment, I lost my place that a teacher would be uh, disciplined for unfairly evaluating a student's work because it did not reflect a specific political, partisan, ideological, or religious belief of the teacher. So that in addition to requiring the teacher make a, a concerted effort to be uh, non-biased, it also says that they could be up for disciplinary action if they do act in a biased manner or in any way negatively impact the child's um, grade because of a difference of opinion. And that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fisher, the ATEC report tonight. Yes, we had our December board meeting on Monday. Uh, they had ATEC career night with um, 81 visitors. Uh, the highest number came from Jefferson High School uh, with 20. Lakeside had 18. Geneva had seven. Uh, this compares to last year where there were 91 visitors. Uh, in 2020, the uh, career night was virtual only, and this was to give both the student and the parents of uh, these students uh, kind of an overview of what was available and uh, a tour of the campus. Also on December 8th, they revived the holiday dinner uh, two years 2020 and 2021, they canceled the dinners because of the COVID situation. They sold 263 dinners uh, to adults, seniors, and children. And then there were 47 student tickets that were used for a total of 310 dinners, which sounds wonderful, except when you bump it up to 2015 when they had 822 dinners. So it has lost some of its steam from prior years, but they were very encouraged that we did have as many as we did. It was a ham dinner with uh, all the uh, accompaniments, and it was very good. And uh, we have hopes that next year we'll be able to increase that number. We will be having our um, organizational meeting for the next year on January 12th. And uh, that's it for eight. Thank you. And the report of our superintendent this evening. <clears throat> so I, I think we are in for a special treat this evening. Um, while our administrators are officially on break, they are still going to be providing us a report, yet in some unique ways and um, various locations. So 
Uh, Mr. Marker John, if you want to come up and get us set up. Implementation. 
the data that we collected from that will be used to update and complete our action plans. At each of the elementary schools, we have a few things going on. Mrs. Herter has been um, pushing into classrooms and uh, teaching character-focused lessons to the classes, going through the books and doing different activities with the students. Um, at GPS, the students submit tutels of shout-outs to other students that they see showing whatever the focus is for the month. Um, so for December, it was self-control. Um, the morning announcements are also providing strategies to um, display the, the character focus traits and different quotes or stories about it. Um, the students at all three elementary schools made cards for their teachers in our class to show their gratitude for the work that they do. Um, at court, the PTO also provided the teachers with supplements to show their gratitude for and what they do for the students. Um, and then at Austinburg and Cork, um, just before break, they watch Inside Out and have popcorn as a reward uh, for show of self-control in the month of December. Um, another thing that I took part in was the spelling bee at GPS. It was one of uh, the judges. It was a fun experience. I enjoyed seeing the kids and um, uh, really had a good time doing that. Lastly, I would like to say thank you to the building secretaries. Without them, a lot of um, the day-to-day -day business of the schools wouldn't happen, um, and I just want to let them know that they are truly appreciated. I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday season, and we'll see you again next month. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this month, I'd like to talk
Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Mr. Malayan, not coming to you live, but coming to you uh, recorded from my wonderful office uh, in here at GMS. Um, I wanted to take a couple minutes to just tell everybody to um, please enjoy the holidays coming up. Uh, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Um, all the fun things that my family has planned, all the things that we do, I just appreciate time being with you know, my wife and the kids. Uh, Take away money that I'm going to have for 
this type of activities. So here are the kids when they were exiting, you know, our box queue, hearing them talk about, well, I should have had, you know, a bunch of an expensive car. Maybe I could have had a better house, or it's really expensive to have kids. So it was really cool to hear the kids kind of get a sense um, and truly appreciate what it's like to be an adult and have a salary, have a budget, and have a family to be responsible for. So I want to thank Stacey Zapatelli from VTech, and I want to thank the dozen or so um, local area businesses who came out. Um, Mrs. Fisher, uh, you were there as always, and you were a fantastic help. So thank you everybody who helped make that day a huge success you know, for our students here to go to school. And again, as I wrap things up, I'm not quite sure what my face looks like in this giant screen in the auditorium, so hopefully I didn't send anybody away, uh, you know, screaming and yelling for the doors. But I hope everybody has a fantastic holiday with whatever it is that you and your family do. And from Mr. Mullahan, Ms. Lakers, and everybody else who's going to go to school, have a very, very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to the Geneva um, and the City School. was it led before the board meeting and all through the school. The students were about, but the teachers in hand. Even the mouse was happy and all excited about the day. The Interact Club made cookies to take to the nursing homes. Over 30 dozen cookies will be donated to the local nursing homes by the Interact Club. And the Jasper Bridges Challenge and Student Council shared their Christmas cheer with seven families by buying them food and gifts to make their holiday cheers come true. The Philanthropy Club visited five nonprofits to see who they wanted to donate for the five thousand dollars to. The cheer and well-being didn't slack for the students. This year, the teachers raised almost a thousand dollars to help help the families that fall apart times. Working with MTS Tires and the Geneva staff, we played and placed tires for one of the students' cars so that they could make sure that he could come to school. The second student asked for a dryer uh, to help them do their laundry and things at home. The teachers also raised the money with Officer Cooper doing all the install and maintenance to get them a dryer in their house. The cheers go far, far, and I just want to thank all the students and the staff for everything they've done this year to make sure that our Gene Eagles are taken care of. Once an eagle, always an eagle. In addition to all of the cheer that the Geneva students and staff are promoting inside our community, they have also taken on a couple of projects. The Adobe Creative Design has taken on this project in particular. This is the program that is used at our sporting events, uh, in which the athletic boosters have been outside of the district to get done. This year, they designed and created one of the programs and are going to take that on this project. In addition to that project, they are also taking over the banners in front of the school and the senior banners that go downtown. We look forward to all the hard work and effort they put in and can't wait to see their final project. Thank you very much to Mr. McCoy and his class for taking those on. From the high school staff and everyone at GHS, we wish you all a happy holiday. I certainly hope everyone enjoyed those. Um, I love our administrator.
thought that they did a tremendous job um, along with the students making the videos. And um, I, I love them. I, I can't say that enough cool. about them. Yes, very creative. Thank you. It was very entertaining. <clears throat> Okay, up next is enclosed for review the following replacement or revised policy. Is there discussion on that? <clears throat> so if you recall from last month, um, there was discussion on this um, board policy and um, it was decided that each of the board members would provide input to me and I would take that um, and kind of compile it and rewrite the policy. So this is um, the first reading of that that you had received and from those compilations, um, I guess to maybe note the differences before we open it up for discussion, um, it would just leave the first hearing of the public um, those who were wishing to speak during the hearing of the public would register their intention within one business day um, and indicate which agenda item that they wanted to speak about uh, and each participant would have three minutes to speak. Okay, so at this point we <coughs> can discuss if anybody has any questions or items that they want to to clarify or, or further discuss on this policy? I guess my first question is, and also 30 minutes, right? Three minutes each and still for a total of 30. Correct. Correct. So I had, um, part of my input was that I, I wish to include um, a piece of the policy that says that it should be stakeholders. Meaning, in my opinion, meaning that you either live in the district, have a student in the district, work for the district, so that it's our community that gets to be heard and share their opinions and thoughts about topics that affect our community at the board meeting. And it didn't get included in this first draft, and so I was curious for the, my question is for the other board members, if that's something that you also would like included, or you don't think that's a good idea, I'd like to know where you all stand on that. Well, first I'd like to ask, do we have the leeway based on this um, template for the policy to include something like that? Because most of this policy is drawn up by <coughs> Neoman, is it? Neola. Neola, I'm sorry. The um, template, I should say, is created by Neola okay. with the options. Okay. So I understand that Neola writes this with the options, so I guess I'm unsure whether there are options pertaining to that particular topic that Neola has written, written into this policy. There are districts who do um, limit it to those who live, work, um, I, I don't know the exact verbiage, but typically it's live and or work in the community. I would be fine with that. I believe there are a couple other school boards in the county that do have uh, that restriction that you are a stakeholder in the school district. Okay, so I'm sorry, not to belabor the point, but so there are more options to this template than what we were presented with from Neola. Uh, no, this is the template. So the other school boards that have worked other language in, it's just a one-off. They work the language in and Neola looks at it and says, okay, that's acceptable for, for our policy. But it doesn't become part of the template. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, right. like there's a template, but like the, the, maybe some of the other districts that have some of the different rules for theirs it's presented to Neola and they say yes that could be written into the policy or no that doesn't abide by Ohio Revised Code. I mean those things are options but they're not options in a template that they provide to us. Yes, so we can, if you wanted to add additional language, we can submit that to Neola and then they would review it. Um, whether or not they give their stamp of approval, so to speak, um, 
they would come back with that. If it's not something that's in their template, then typically my understanding is they would advise us to have our legal counsel review it um, because what's in their template is what they um, what they would back, um, so to speak. If the policy was ever challenged, their template has already been previewed by legal counsel. Okay. So first they would give it their stamp of approval, Dr. Treehorn, and then they recommend that we pass it through our attorneys as well? If it's something that's in the template. Then no. But something additional like this. If it's in the template, then yes, they're saying their legal counsel has already reviewed the language options okay. that are provided to us in the template. Yes. If it is not in their template, they're not saying you absolutely can't add language, but what they're saying is they wouldn't necessarily, they're not backing up that language, so to speak, um, and then they would recommend that if it was something that we wanted to include, that we would have our legal counsel review it to see if they felt it was appropriate <coughs> to include. Thank you. Does anybody else want to weigh in on that topic that Mrs. Dixon brought up? <clears throat> okay. Is there any further? Well, topics? so then what do we do next to either? decide to put that language in or to not put that language in? I, I mean, I, I think, I think what the direction or the directive that Dr. Treehorn was given at the last meeting was to collect all of our mm -hmm. um, ideas, so to speak, and put it together. And I believe that what she did was put together where we kind of all landed, where we were maybe more of a majority so I'm not right. sure that unless we have additional discussion and minds um, or opinions on that topic change that it would necessarily be added to the policy at this time. Was that topic given to all of us? I don't no. Go ahead. Well, the template was provided. I mean, certainly right. if there were things outside of the template that you wanted on it, um, you know, the others wouldn't necessarily know that because they were provided the options in the template. Right, that's why I'm bringing it up so that they're, so that you're all aware that I think that language should go in there and I wanted your sort of buy-in on it, I guess. Okay. I don't disagree. I mean, there's really no reason for anybody who's not a stakeholder to have input in our district. Except that we've had that and it's, I believe it to be disruptive. I agree. One thing I want to make clear also is that this is the first reading of this policy. Um, anything that is changed in what, how this policy reads today, um, then we come to our next meeting where we have, um, because of a change, another first reading. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that we have the option of uh, foregoing two readings and, and going with just one and making it official and voting on it in one reading. Mr. Lilly, I don't know, maybe you can correct me on that or, or we can look that up. I don't know. I do not believe that that is the case when it comes to a bylaw, okay. but I would want to confirm that okay. first. Okay, so to be clear with us not knowing that, if we make changes to the way that this policy is written tonight, then it will show back up on the agenda in January as a, another first reading. And then we'd have to have another second reading. Correct. I mean a second reading. A second yes. reading. Okay. Right. With that being the case, I'd prefer to leave it as is. Okay. I do not have input on this. I'm sorry. Do we have any other topics that we want brought up um, as it pertains to the policy and the way it reads right now? Clarification, discussion? So my second question is when does it go into effect then? So we have first reading, let's say tonight because we're not changing any language, second reading in January. So then when does it go into effect? February? 
Uh, I would recommend that the second reading and approval be done at the January organizational meeting after the organizational okay. items, and then it would be in effect at the regular January meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there any further comment? Um, I've already made my opinion known to Dr. Treehorn. I am not in favor of this showing up on the organizational meeting agenda. It's just my opinion. Anything else? What do you mean, Mrs. Metzler? You want it to be, like I just stated, January first read or second reading? On the, it goes on, the effect on, February. on the regular meeting in January as opposed to the organizational. Okay. Yeah. Anything further? The superintendent recommends disposal or sale of the enclosed list of banned items not needed for the school district. Moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Just, I just had one quick comment. The, the covers, the red covers for the tubas, we just bought those, um, Gamba just bought those for COVID when we were getting back into band and having them be sort of a, a mask for the instruments. We gave all the instruments a mask. So that when the child blew into it, like spittle and whatever doesn't come out. So I'm just curious why just get rid of those, not all of the covers, but it doesn't matter. If they don't need them, they don't need them, but we just bought them, so. My understanding, and I know Mr. Weatherholt's here, so maybe he could help clarify, but my understanding are the ones that are on the disposal list are old. Oh, not the COVID ones we just bought? Oh. That clarifies it. Thank you, Mr. Weatherall. <coughs> Excuse me. Any further discussion? And roll call, please. Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. And Mrs. Metzler? Yes. The treasurer recommends adoption of the appropriations as presented for fiscal year 22-23. Moved. Second. And discussion on this? Um, this is just uh, an amended appropriation resolution. The main purpose is to update a lot of the new grants, such as the uh, connectivity grant, emergency connectivity grant, the school safety grant that we have now, the EBT funds, and uh, carryover funds, where money that wasn't spent in, in the 21-22 federal grants carries forward to the 22-23 um, year. In some cases, on the ESSER funds, like homeless and uh, ARP IDA, um, they have to carry forward into new separate funds from what they were before. So this updates all those, and there's about four line items in the general fund that were updated. Any further discussion? In the roll call, please. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. And Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. The superintendent recommends the following personnel actions for the 22 23 contract year as amended earlier in our meeting. We need a motion. Moved. Second. Any discussion? I'm just curious as to um, Ms. Baker, the band director. Do we have a sub for her? The children have been through many directors and I, I'm just concerned about the continuity of the program. I mean, there have been subs in the, the room, correct? I don't think it's been one consistent one though. And they're not certified in music? Ms. Brown. Ms. Baker. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? And roll call, please. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken Dixon? Yes. And Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Okay, we are um, at the addition of 5A as we talked about earlier in the meeting, so the superintendent recommends the following personnel action for the 22-23 school year. This is the amended version. Moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? 
and roll call. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon? No. And Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. The superintendent recommends the following volunteer coach for the 22-23 school year. Moved. Second. Discussion? And roll call, please. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. And Mr. Arndt? Yes. The superintendent recommends the following volunteer for the 22-23 school year. Move. Second. And discussion. And roll call. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. And Ms. Fisher? Yes. The board will need to determine a date, time, and place for the 23 organizational meeting. A president pro tem for the organizational meeting will need to be appointed. Um, it has been recommended that our organizational meeting be held on January 4th, 2023 at 630 in the Media Center. And we'll need a um, motion for a president pro tem. I nominate Mrs. Ortiz to be the president pro tem. Second. Is there any discussion? And will that date work for our board? January 4th, Wednesday? Wednesday at 630. Yes. I'm good. Okay. As am I. Ladies? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay. Any further discussion on that? In the media center. Yes. Okay. In the media center. And roll call, please. I'm sorry. Oh. 6 or 630? 630. 6.30. Thank you. And roll call, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Mrs. Milliken-Dixon? Yes. Mrs. Ortiz? Can I vote? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. And Mrs. Metzler? Yes. We've arrived at the second hearing of the public. All of the same parameters apply. If there's anybody that would like to speak, please approach the microphone. Okay, as nobody is at the microphone, we will move on to other. Um, so first I wanted to provide an update on the board office project. Um, the request for qualifications for the construction manager at risk services went out on December 9th and will be um, accepted until January 9th. And then just providing a, a short timeline thereafter, um, the short list of qualified firms will be announced on January 12th along with the request for pricing and technical proposals. Uh, will be issued to the short list of firms that same day. On the 19th, there will be a pre-proposal submission meeting. On January 26th will be the deadline for submitting pricing and technical proposals. On January 31st, we'll be conducting interviews and a decision or selection, I should say, for a construction manager at risk will take place on February 1st. So just an update on where we are with that. Um, certainly, it is the holiday season, and people have been very generous. I think we heard that, for example, in Mr. Weatherholt's um, video in particular. Uh, I would also like to thank my secretary, Amy Richmond, for her work on the United Way campaign this year. As a district, we, we raised $5,171, which is up from $4,547 from last year. So thank you to all who donated for that. Um, you heard from a couple of the schools, they talked about Operation Toy Soldier. Um, again, I would like to personally thank everyone who has donated for that um, across the district. While we did not end up on top this year, I think that the real winners are certainly all those who will benefit from the donations. Um, taking first place was Conneaut this year. Um, they had 7,912 items collected. We were in second with 5,706 items, and Buckeye finished with 1,565 items. Um, within our district, I will say the winning school who collected the most items was Austinburg. Um, they collected 2,267 items uh, with Cork in a close second. As um, this, we heard the students report, they collected 1,670 items. So again, thank you to all who contributed, um, and I especially want to thank Kathy Odegaard for driving the bus and staying out at Walmart um, that day for the collection. Uh, moving on, there were two pieces of work that I had talked about engaging in this year, um, one being the portrait of a graduate. Um, that has been completed already. 
and the second is a strategic plan for the district. So there will be four areas um, that we'll be looking at and hope, it, hope to have um, a variety of stakeholders serve on those committees. So if you are interested, um, there will be a Google form coming out soon um, on our website and social media. So I would encourage you to complete that and we hope to start the meetings the beginning of the second semester. Also in January when the date of our regular January Board of Education meeting is decided upon, I certainly would encourage everyone to attend. Um, it's the meeting that we not only utilize to um, recognize all of the first semester Soaring Eagles, but we will also be doing a big reveal. So as I previously mentioned, we did finish our work with the portrait of a graduate. Uh, and if you recall, we had put out the survey on the different graphics for people to vote on and the results of that are in. So we will be revealing um, the winning one at that meeting as well. And then it will be sent to the Battelle for Kids website so that it could be showcased there with all of the other school districts um, as well. I know that Mr. Riley touched upon our third grade fall English language arts uh, results, but I also want to congratulate not only our third grade students, but our kindergarten through third grade staff um, for such wonderful results. So not only were we above the state average by 10%, but we had buildings who improved as much as 22% from last fall to this fall. Uh, additionally, Austinburg was 40, 40, 40% higher than the state average. So I thought that was excellent. Um, so again, congratulations um, to all the hard work of our students and staff. Our Soaring Eagles for this month at Austinburg, we had fifth grade student Claire Clemens, chosen by Mrs. Cozy. She wrote that Claire is a wonderfully sweet young lady who is always willing to help herself or others in their fifth grade classroom at Austinburg Elementary. I am honored to have her in my classroom, she wrote. She is a responsible young lady in charge of taking lunch count every day. Her sunny disposition and awesome smile brighten everyone's day. Claire does a fantastic job, both academically and behaviorally. She has great attendance as well. I can't think of any other student more deserving of this honor. So congratulations to Claire. At Cork, uh, we had a teacher, fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Ball, chosen by Mrs. Milliken Dixon. And she wrote that Mrs. Ball has dedicated her entire career to the students of Geneva. She has handled the challenges of the past three years with skill and grace, always putting her students first. She is an incredible asset to this district and personifies the mantra, once an eagle, always an eagle. At GPS, Ms. McNeil chose first grade student Claire Ramey and said that Claire is a model student in and out of the classroom. She is a hard worker, well-mannered, always willing to help, and is a friend to everyone. She is the definition of a soaring eagle. At the middle school, Mrs. Pierce chose sixth grade Kaylin Murphy. She wrote that Kaylin is an exemplary student and is always willing to help her classmates and teachers at all times. She goes above and beyond and will peer tutor, assist a struggling student, and will also help classroom teachers with any tasks she is asked to complete. She gives her classmates a chance to answer questions in class and is willing to explain math if necessary. She exhibits wonderful behavior and always models sore behaviors amongst her peers and at Geneva Middle School, even when no one is watching. Her positive behavior and attitude is a pleasure to see and witness here at school. She truly is a leader among her peers. And last but not least, at the high school, uh, Mr. Shimsky chose sophomore Kenneth Cisnato and wrote, he currently has him in both American history and world geography. Kenneth arrived last year in the Geneva Area City School District from Honduras. And despite having to learn a new language, Kenneth has done an excellent job in the classroom this year and is really thriving here at GHS. He is an extremely hardworking and conscientious student. He has all assignments completed on time and has vastly improved in his classroom performance throughout the school year. Kenneth has a remarkable work ethic. He works exceedingly hard in the classroom and the results of his dedication have started to pay dividends. Kenneth has done especially well on class projects and presentations, which is even more extraordinary when you take into account he just started to learn English last year. For these reasons, he felt Kenneth is more than deserving of being a soaring eagle. 
So congratulations to all of our Soaring Eagles. Um, and again, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a wonderful, healthy um, holiday and a happy new year. So I hope that everyone has time to en enjoy the time off and spend some time with family and friends. Thank you. Are there any other topics for others this evening? I have a couple. I did a couple of school visits and I wanted to shout out to some people. I came here to the high school and met with um, Mr. Brad Hunt and Mr. Sean Cripple. Is it Cripple? I believe so. Um, and about their work with the special ed students. And I got to observe one of Mr. Cripple's algebra classes and Mr. Hunt's intervention within that class. And it was really helpful to see that. And he was, he was clear, Mr. Hunt was clear in telling me that he doesn't just help the identified students. If someone has a question and Mr. Cripple is busy, he certainly jumps in and, and helps. Um, and they were, the information they gave me was really valuable and I appreciated that. Um, I appreciated less Mr. Cripple making me speak to the class. He called me up and made me talk about being a school board member, not made me, but encouraged me, asked me to talk about being a school board member and what that means and what my job is and how I got this job and all of that. And it was really neat, and I thought the kids, children, students, responded really well. Uh, that was here at the high school. I also went to Cork. I went to see Mrs. Cinco and Mrs. Ellis's kindergarten class because I wanted to see for myself what it's like to navigate a classroom with 26 kindergartners. Unfortunately, it's flu season, and so I think like 21 out of the, out of the classes combined were absent that day. So it was a much lower number, but I wanted to get the feel of what that feels to me to be like a lot of students and a lot of little ones. And so I just wanted to shout out to them. They are both outstanding teachers. I knew Mrs. Cinco from when she was at GPS in the second grade, and she holds up that standard um, so well. And Mrs. Ellis as well, just amazingly patient and compassionate with, with the little guys. Um, I also went to Mrs. Kirk's fifth grade class and got to read them a story, and that was really fun, and they were really interested in um, me and what I was doing there, and they had all these questions about why I come to visit and what my job is and all that, and that was really cool. Fifth graders are, are mountains of questions. Um, and at Cork, I saw the third grade program, um, Elfish, or Elfis. And it was, it was so cute. And so a shout out to Mrs. Stow Stowell um, about what a great uh, Christmas program that was and what a great music program that was. And last but not least, I also had the pleasure of accompanying Santa when he visited all five schools. And at the middle school, he was like a rock star. The sixth graders screamed for him and lined up to give him a hug and it was just really fun. We accompanied Mrs. Jones to each of the schools to give away the bicycle that they had, the cafeteria staff had raised the money to get for a student, the winner. Um, when they wear jeans on Friday, they put a dollar in the kitty and that bought these wonderful prizes for students and it was just a super, super fun two hours all around. So, and thank you all, uh, happy holidays. Any further comments this evening? Okay, I'll just chime in briefly. I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Riley um, last week as our assistant superintendent. I met with him last year when he was the principal at the middle school. And I just wanted to check in with him about how his new role is going. And um, really, he's just a few months into it, so he could give me as much information as he could give me about what he's been involved in in the first few months. Um, but he has a lot to do. Um, and in this new role, he's got a lot to learn and he's got the right people around him to ask questions if, he, if there's something that he doesn't know. Um, we talked a bit about testing because at the time that I visited him, the high school was in the midst of testing and he said it went really well. Um, and we talked a little bit about what his role is in that and, and he mentioned that he put together an entire test schedule for the year for the buildings as the testing coordinator for the district. So I thought that that was a real positive improvement to get that information out to the parents earlier um, so that they can prepare their students going forward. 
and um, you know he he works on the federal pro as the federal funds programs coordinator, the gifted program, as I said, the testing, Title IX. So he has his hands full most days. Um, and he did also tell me about that library partnership that he mentioned in his video to us tonight. So I'm very excited to hear about that. I've long thought that the, the school district needs to become more of a partner with our library because it is a true benefit to have a local library and particularly so close to one of our schools. So I'm very excited to hear about this partnership. And I did ask him if there was, um, or he asked me actually with his board reports if there was anything that the board would like to see different than what he's reporting currently. And I told him that I thought that the amount of information that he's been giving us has been wonderful. It's more than we used to get in previous years. And that I told him none of us were really shy about reaching out if we had questions or if we wanted additional information. So it was an enjoyable conversation and he's, you know, really settling into that role very well. So, and echoing my colleagues, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you all. I recommend the board hold an executive session for the purpose of considering the appointment, employment, discipline, promotion, demotion, and compensation of a public employee or official, in addition to the um, other reason for executive session that was amended earlier in our meeting by Dr. Treehorn. Move. Second. Discussion? And roll call, please. Mrs. Ortiz? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Metzler? Yes. And Mrs. Milliken-Dixon? Yes. Thank you all for your attendance. Have a safe holiday season.